Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be doing this Aladdin's lamp with a genie coming out picture. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure you click that like button and also, of course, share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any videos in the future. And to learn a lot more about how to use Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete courses and you'll find a link for that up there in the upper right hand corner. Okay, let's get to it. This Photoshop Elements Aladdin's Lamp picture is made up of a few pieces. First, of course, there's the lamp right there with the little shadow we'll add in later. There's the background, which is duplicated also down here for this table. There's the smoky effect in behind there. And then there are all these stars and sparkles on top of that. So a few different things to handle to make this final composite picture. We'll start off with making the smoky effect, and they'll bring that back in a little bit later on. I'm just going to close this down. There we are. And we'll start off with a brand new file, blank file. I'll set this one at the default Photoshop Elements size right there. And there we go. There's our nice blank file. Now I need to have the background black, so I'll just fill this with black. Notice that the foreground color is black already, so that was easy to do. And then we want a new layer on top of this layer. So new layer, new layer button. There it is. This is going to be our first smoke layer. Now to do this, we're going to be using white, painting streaks in here with white, and then modifying those streaks. Let's switch our foreground color to white. Click on that little arrow right there. Grab the paintbrush. Come in here. Make sure that you're on default brushes. Scroll down and just grab one of the soft brushes down here. I'll grab the 65, which is right there. That's close to what I want. Let's now change this from 65 down to 50. So it's 50 pixels. It's a soft edge brush, and we have it on white. Let's check our settings. Those are your default settings, so that's fine. There we go. Okay, now what this does is if I paint in here, you get these kind of white streaks like that. We'll be doing two different sizes. We'll be doing this one size at 50 and they'll be doing a couple or one smaller one actually at 25. So you have these two different sizes. Let's just back up a few steps here. I'll do undo brush. I'll just do the control Z key here to get rid of those. Okay, so that's our basic setup. Let's set this back to 50. And then you want to start right around here in the middle. We're going to be doing one like this over here and kind of coming back to the, towards the top and then one over here like that. So let's go ahead and do that. Just like this, kind of squiggly. Come back down to the beginning here and there's kind of a squiggly thing over here. It does need to be perfect. If you don't like this, you can go back and change it later on to just do this step again. We'll do the smoke part of it again and change it in the future. So that's okay. Let's now change this down to 25. And I'm going to come in here and just overlap these a little bit like that. Just kind of like that. Just kind of a, a squiggly thing with that set at 25. Okay, that's good. That's our basic start for the smoke. Now it's all on one layer as you can see up here and that's perfect. We're now going to blur this out just a little bit. Go up to the filter, come down to the Gaussian blur which is right here and set this at 10. It just kind of softens that up just a little bit. I'm going to pull it down. There we go. Looks good. The position, by the way, doesn't matter on this picture at this point. We're just working with just the smoke itself. We're now going to do a fancy trick on this one. And that's up here. Filter. Come down to Other. And then over to Maximum. And this is kind of a weird thing in here. Now, if I bring this down, you'll see how there's the original. If I pull it up, we get these kind of weird, strange effects happening in here. If you go too far, it just begins to disappear. You can choose how far you want to go on this one. The further you are to the left, the more like your original it stays, and the more you go towards the right, the more distorted it becomes. I kind of like 10 on this one for this size. So I'll just do it at 10. Get those little like hot spots in there. It's kind of interesting looking. 
Okay, there's our 10. That's fine. Choose OK. Let's now duplicate this layer. Grab this, make a duplicate. And we're going to flip this duplicate layer. So it's image, come down to rotate, flip layer horizontal. There it is. I'm going to grab the side here, pull this side in, and I'll pull this side in a bit. And this reposition so that the bottom is on top of the bottom right there. Just overlapping this. As we can get real creative, and this is also why I only did just those three squigglies, because you, if you do more, it gets really complicated. Now, if you want thicker smoke lines, this is good for what we're doing here for this particular video. But if you want more of a soft smoke, you look for something else like a smoldering candle or something, just use a larger brush size. We used 50, and you go to a 75 or maybe even 100, and you'll get fatter lines in there, which looks more like wispy smoke. Okay, so there we go. There's our basic layout for that. We're now going to distort these two things. Come back down to layer one right here. This just adds in some variety for us. So we're on layer one, that's our first smoke layer. Go up to filter, come down to distort, way down here to wave. Let's let this load in that wave filter. There it is. Now in the wave filter, number generators is set at nine. Make sure this is set at sign over here. Wavelength is 150. Minimum and max is 200. Everything else stays the same. And then choose OK. It just kind of really distorts that. Do the exact same thing on the next one up here. So that's filter. Come down to distort. Come down to wave. Your settings are already in there. Choose OK. It distorts that one as well. Now you may need to reposition this a bit to get your center point right. And so it looks good. I'm going to push off to the left just a little bit here. There we go. So it's, there's more over here and a little less over there. I like there being something kind of sticking out like that. So there you go. There's the basic smoke effect on this. We're now going to make another little change. Grab the layer one. This is the bigger of these smoke layers. Pull this to the top. So it's sitting on top instead of underneath. We'll see why in a second. It's very, very subtle on this one. We're going to Gaussian blur this layer again. Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. It's still set at 10. There we go. It's just what I want. I guess more variety, more adjustment happening in here. And now we're going to add Layer Mask to both of these. So it's Layer Mask button on that one, a Layer Mask button on that one. And then we'll be doing a fade out from top down to the bottom. We'll do the fade out with a gradient in here. Make sure you're on the layer mask side. Look for that light blue outline. If you see it over here, just double click over here to get that light blue outline on this side. Come down, reset your colors, black foreground, white background. Grab the gradient tool. Make sure you're on linear gradient right there. Everything else should be normal, opacity, that should all be the same. So we have black to white and then we're going to be pulling the black. Now black hides and white shows. So I'm going to pull it just off screen up here. Pull it straight down about halfway. And that just fades out the top. Okay, same thing over here. Very top, pull it down about halfway. Fades out the top. Okay, so far so good. Now back to the top layer. And we'll be putting a gradient fill above this layer up here. So go up to Layer, come down here to Fill Layer, and Gradient, where it says Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask. Check that one, and choose OK. That puts a gradient onto that one. I want to change my gradient, though. Click on the gradient, go up here where it says Default, come down to Noise Samples, and go over here to this blue thing and then change the roughness down to 35. There it is. And choose OK. And it puts blue on top of that smoke for us with some variation in there. So it's kind of purpley down here, some blue in there, a little bit of green up in there. So that's just some variation, making it look a bit more interesting. Change the angle here to 180. So it moves it left to right instead of top to bottom. 
and choose OK. And then bring the opacity for that layer down. I'm going to have mine down at just about 35, so it's pretty subtle. But just a little bit of blue coloring. If you want to have more color in there, just pull it up further and you can have more coloration. That's fine. It's up to you how much color you want to have in your smoke. I'm going to keep mine very, very simple at 35. So if I show and hide that, it's just a very subtle bluish tint in there now with some nice variation to it. Okay, that takes care of that part of it. Now, one more step above this layer. Make a new layer. There we go. It's new mask layer. Now, double click on this layer where it says layer 2. Rename this layer black mask. We'll need that later on to keep from getting confused on a different step later on in, the, in this video. So make that black mask and go over to our brushes, change the foreground color to black, which is just right there, or hit the reset buttons. So foreground color at black. Come down to the brush size, set the brush size at 150. There we go, pretty big size brush, you can see it right there. And we're just going to use this and paint on this layer. And it's changed the opacity down to 20%. Or thereabouts, there you go. And then use this just to kind of paint in here and add a bit more variation. We're just, this allows us to knock down some of the smoke in here. And just add a bit more variation to that. So you get more hot spots showing and some darker areas. And there's without and with. Again, just a bit more variation onto the smoke. Okay, and that's it. That's for the smoky effect. That's all taken care of now. If you want, you can save this layer as a smoke layer. You don't need to, but you might want to save it just to use elsewhere or to come back and play with that. Okay, we're now going to move on to the lamp as our next step. I'll just open up the lamp picture up here. Now it's called Genie Lamp and I have a link for this. You'll find that in the materials for this in the description. Let's bring that up. There's the Genie Lamp. Notice like this coming in here as a floating window. You need to have that available for you. You don't need it right now, but you need to have this working. If you don't have that set up, just go up to the Edit menu, come down to Preferences, click on General, and right here it says allow floating documents in expert mode and enable floating document window docking. Make sure that those two are checked and then choose OK. So then you can have your floating windows. All right, I'm just going to dock this one for the moment. There it is. On this, all we need is the lamp and not the background. So first thing, grab your background layer, drag it up here to a new layer. So this is background copy, hide your original. I always do that whenever I'm working with any kind of a picture, just as a safety. In case I mess up on this, I can always go back to my background. There's my saved original image. Now to make this selection, I'll just be using the polygonal lasso tool. Set at new selection, and I have my feathering set at one pixel right there. And I'll simply be making a selection around the lamp, like that, on the outside. We'll use that selection to make a layer mask. I'll then come in and make a selection in here and we'll paint black into that bit to do the layer mask for the inside of there. So it's a couple of steps. I'll just start this off and tell you what I'll be doing. Then we'll jump forward in time here to make things go a little bit quicker on this. You don't even want to watch me just making a selection. Kind of boring. But I'll do the very, very beginning of this and show you how to use this one tool. So polygonal lasso tool, there it is again, new, feathering at one pixel. The way this works is you click and then you drag and you can make a point, click, and you can drag another point, click, drag another point. If you want to do a curve, it's just a bunch of little clicks in there. Make sure you don't click too fast. You get a double click and it collapses the selection. You don't want to have that happen. So don't click too fast with this particular tool. Okay, let's deselect that. All right, I'm going to start off right here and then just carefully work down, find my spot like that. I'll be right there. And then as I find my spot, I just click on that mouse and that sets that selection in at that spot. 
If it's a straighter section, you can go a lot further out. If it gets into a curve, just put your points closer together. And let's just work down just a little ways around on this. I'll come down to this corner down here, and that's as far as I'll take it. So there's the corner. And begin working like this. Now, if you're using this tool, if you move it just off the picture, the picture will scroll automatically. And that then allows you to do more of this selection without having to, you know, do just little pieces at a time. So you have that ability to move the window around just by pushing this off to the side. I'll just push off to the side like that. Scrolls the window. I can then come back here and get back to making my selection. Okay, I'm going to pause the video right now just for a moment. I'll finish the selection around the lamp and then bring the video right back up again. And there it is. I brought the selection clear around and back around to the beginning, right onto the beginning point, and that just closes that selection. At that point, click the layer mask button. It makes a layer mask based upon that selection. So it gets rid of all that background. Now we still have background inside here. So I'll zoom in on this one. Same basic idea on this. I'll start off with my selection. And again, I'm going to pause this after starting it and then finish it off off camera. But I'll go around the inside like this and just follow along again on this handle and make this selection around. And I'll pause right now. As soon as this is finished, as I'm done here, then I'll bring this right back up again. And I'll show you the next step. And there's a selection of the inside section. We're still on the layer mask, as you can see over here. Let's just now grab the paint bucket, fill as our foreground color, and just click into that selection that then fills that with black on the layer mask, which uses that for the mask. Okay, go ahead and deselect, and that's now ready to use. The next step is to make a new file. So file, new, blank file. And set this again at the default Photoshop element size. Choose OK. There's our file. I'm just going to dock this up here like that. Let's go back to this tab. Here's the Aladdin lamp. This is why I want to have this as a floating window. Just pull that down, and it floats that window out here. I'm going to switch over to the Move tool. And with this as a floating window, I can now just grab that layer up here with the lamp and the layer mask and drag it onto my new file. You can then close this one down. If you want to save it at this point, that's fine. It'll save those layers for you because you want to do anything in the future with that one. I'm not going to bother with that. I already have that saved elsewhere. So there's the lamp on the page. Now it's too big as you can see, and it's also going the wrong direction. So let's just grab the corner here and push it in a little bit. Pull it down so it's about bottom left hand side there and then grabbing the upper right hand corner again make sure your bottom is matching your bottom on the left hand side like that grab this corner pull this in until this side matches at about three and three quarters so let's pull it in like that until you're about at the three and three quarters you can see there's a little little line up there you can see that put that right about at the three and three quarters mark there you go so it's that big okay that's the right size Position is right, but I need it facing the other direction. We'll do that up here under Image, Rotate, and then down here, Flip Layer Horizontal. It just reverses that. Okay, just put it right around down here someplace. Anywhere in there is just fine. Okay, so the lamp is done. Our smoke is done. Next thing is to work on the table and that background. Get that stuff happening in here. We'll do the table part of that first. Now to do that, we're going to change the background here over to a different background. Come down to the back, the graphics right there and set this to backgrounds. Now quite a ways down, I'm going to go clear to the top up here. There's the backgrounds at the top. If you scroll down, it's quite a ways. It's down about two-thirds of the way down. Just scrolling on down. So a bunch of red stuff comes in here. There it is, a whole bunch of red things right there. This one, it's called Red Silk. Click on that, and that jumps in. Now, if you see a little blue triangle on that one up there, that blue triangle means that it needs to be downloaded from online, from the 
Adobe website. So if you see the blue triangle, make sure that you are currently connected to the internet so you can then download that background onto your system. The download only has to be done once. Once it's on your system, you're all set to go. Okay, so it's as a background now. Let's go back to our layers. Take the background layer, drag it up here to the new layer button. So you have a copy of that and then hide the background. On this one, we now have our control handles. So I'll take the bottom one, pull it up a little bit, pull the whole thing down. That's because it's a little bit too tall actually for our picture. And then pull the top down. Pull the sides out just a little bit so you're just past the sides and just past the bottom. So you're just outside, just a hair outside, just a hair outside on the right hand side. And on, on the top side up here, pull this one down. Look over here on the left hand side. Look at the rulers on the left hand side. Right there where it says two and a half. Pull this down until it gets to that two and a half point. You can see the line right in there. There you go. Two and a half. It's just at the top of this thing. It's kind of right in the middle of the handle. It doesn't have to be exact. You can be off by a little bit up or down. It doesn't have to be exact. But to match what I'm doing, just go to the two and a half part. Choose OK. This is going to be our little table section in here underneath the lamp. We'll use this for that bit of table section. Next, we need to put a black layer behind all this stuff. So come down to the background. Click on New Layer right there. Make sure your foreground color is black. Go up to the fill bucket, paint bucket, and just click in here someplace to fill that with black. Okay, so far so good. Now we're going to be putting an ellipse in here. We'll use the ellipse to create our layer mask. We're doing this just a little bit different than you may have seen in the past, but it makes it real easy this time. So go up here to the silk layer. I'm going to rename this one silk. There we go. And put a layer mask on that. White layer mask, that's fine. Now change your foreground background color to white. Click to the ellipse tool. If you see rectangle, just go down to the ellipse. Now sometimes this doesn't want to change colors. It doesn't matter. We'll make it work out. So set this at unconstrained from center. And then come into the middle of the lamp, right around here somewhere. And just pull this out until you get a shape that is just big enough to kind of contain the lamp. Just like that. So it's just, just a bit larger than the lamp. Now it's black. That's OK. It's, like I said, we can fix that right now. Just switch the colors back to white, paint bucket, click inside of that, and you have a white ellipse. Now make a copy of this. In case you want to change this later, I'm going to make a copy of this layer to save this one. New layer like that. Let's hide that shape. And this new one, I'm going to double click here and just rename this ellipse. There it is. There's our ellipse layer. On this layer, right click on the name and simplify layer. It's no longer a shape, it's now just a graphic. We're going to soften the edge of this using that Gaussian blur. So filter, come down to blur, Gaussian blur right there, and change this to 50. Real big soft blur as you can see and choose OK. Now that we have this, I want to position this onto the layer mask down here. We'll use this to create our mask for the layer mask. Just leave it where it is. That's fine. Hide that for a second. Come down to the layer mask here. Make sure on the layer mask side, again, look for that light blue outline. If you don't see it, double click change your color to black foreground, paint bucket, and just click any old place. It fills that whole layer with that black coloration. Okay, back to the Move tool. Let's show our ellipse again. And I'm now going to move this down so it's about where I want it. I want it kind of like this. I want a little bit of darkness showing in there, not too much. And I want just a little bit of light showing up there across the top again, not too much. So it's kind of just moved down. So at the center, the little, little center point, let me see if I can show that. There it is, that little center point. It's kind of in the middle of the base in here, is a pretty good spot. You can kind of barely see that. So that's where you want to have that done. Okay, go up to Select All. 
that selects that whole layer and then edit copy and then deselect. We can now hide that layer. Let's come down to our silk layer. Make sure you're still on that layer mask side. That's that lock over here. Just double click on that to unlock that layer. Now hold the Alt key down and click on that layer mask. And this takes you inside of the layer mask itself. We now can go up here to edit, come down to paste, and it pastes this onto the layer mask. You can see right there. Now just pull that down until it hits that bottom left hand corner just where we had it before and then deselect. That's now the layer mask. Now to come out of this thing, click back on the image side and then click to a different layer, it doesn't matter which one, and that resets it and there's that little table that's sitting on made with that special layer mask. We're now ready to bring our smoke into the picture. So let's go back over here to the smoke file right there. I'm going to pull this down so it's a floating window. And click on your top layer, hold the shift key down, click on the bottom of the smoke layers. Don't click on the black background. Take this and just drag it over here. Now if you're using Photoshop Elements 15 or Photoshop Elements 2018, this is a great time to use that group right there. Click on the group, mix it a group, and then drag the group. If you're using anything else, just leave it as separate layers. Still works fine, it's just not quite as organized. Okay, grab it over, pull it onto the file like that. You can then close this file. Now we're done with this file. If you want to save it at this point, go ahead and save that file or something. I'm just going to go ahead and close that. And then leaving these things selected, move all this to the top. There we go. Again, if it's in a group, it's just easier at this point, but you don't have to have that. Pull that over and position it right on top of the opening in there. So it's coming out of that. If you want to just smoke, you're done. Aside from the change in the background. I'll be a little bit fancier. Genies tend to come out with some force, so it's going to be pushing this off to the side a little bit. So we're going to rotate this around. Click just outside the corner here. You see that little double kind of bent arrow right there? That brings up the transform options and then change your degrees down here to 30 degrees. It rotates that around a little bit and then again pull that back into position. And that's pretty good. And everything is still selected. At this point if you want to you can adjust the size a little bit. It's up to you. I'm going to pull it in just a bit so that this edge is inside the frame and not outside like that. It just kind of looks like, look nice. I think it's okay. Let's see. Inside, outside. Now I'll bring it in. Alright, so there we go. That's all set to go. And the smoke is now done on the picture. Click on the top layer. It says black mask right there. And then make a new layer above that. Here's our new layer. And then rename this one, double click and rename this one stars one. So we don't get lost on that. There we go, stars one. Okay, now we need to make a special paintbrush. First off, come down and click on the background color. Foreground should be white. If it's not, if it's like that, just click on the default foreground background and click on the reverse arrows. Click on the background and set that to a medium gray Anywhere in here is fine. It can be up or down a little bit, but right around there is fine. Choose OK. So white foreground, medium gray for the background. Let's go back to our paintbrush and back to the brushes right here. Change these to the assorted brushes. And then I'll scroll down. I'm using the wheel on my mouse right now. I'm scrolling down and we'll come down to the stars. Down below here is the beginning of our stars. You want this one right there? It's called Starburst Small. It says 50 beneath it. It's right beneath that standard star there. So Starburst Small. That's our basic star shape right there. Now set the brush size at 150. I'll just type that in. There's 150. Put the opacity at 100. Bring it all the way back up again to 100. So 150 and 100. We're now going to go to the brush settings over here and make some changes on the brush settings. Take the Hue Jitter, this is the foreground to background color shift, move that all the way to the right to 100%. Put 
takes scatter up just to 10%, which is right there, or you can even just type that in. And then on the spacing, set the spacing to 30. I'll just go ahead and type it this time. There's 30. Everything else stays the same. You can then close that dialog box. So there's the starship. I'm just going to click just one right there. Notice how as I click, it goes different places. It doesn't stay exactly the same place each time. It kind of goes randomly around the spot that I'm clicking. That's the important part about that. I'll just use the Control-Z keyboard shortcut here, and let's just back out of those few stars. There we are. Make sure you're still on the stars layer. And we're going to do just little short drags like this. Just little short things. So just a little drag like that. Notice as I drag, it puts down a few random stars. The reason I put that in, the randomness in there, which was with the brush settings, and that's with this scattering, is that it, it looks more natural this way. You don't end up putting things in real predictable spots. They go kind of where you're aiming because you're just brushing where you want it to go. And each time I do a brush, it puts in three or four of those. And just, just kind of like that. Not too heavy, not too thick, just kind of around, maybe a few outside. Just basic stuff. All right, and if you look carefully, you see that some of these are darker, like that medium gray, some of them are whiter. So there's some variation in there on those. Okay, that's the first pass on these stars. Now, we're going to blur this layer. Go up to the filter menu, come down to blur, and Gaussian blur. It's at 50 right now, which is way too high. If I pull that back, and you'll see the stars again. There they are. So I'll set this at 5 pixels. Just a nice soft kind of blur. Those are our background stars. We'll now put a color on this, do some coloration on this. Same trick we did down below earlier, actually over on the smoke with our bluish smoke in there. We'll put a gradient fill layer above this one. So go up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer. This time we'll be using the gradient map right there. It actually maps a gradient across the light and the dark values. Since we had the randomness going in with our light and our dark values, this will put the colors in here as random positioning as well. Let's click on that. Gradient map. Where it says to use previous layer to create clipping mask, make sure that's checked. Choose OK. There's the gradient. Now click on the gradient itself. That brings up the editor. Change the gradient here to Harmonies 1, and what you want is right there. It's called Light Spectrum. It's the second one in. Click on that, and notice what it does. It kind of takes these colors and puts them randomly amongst all of those. Just a little random coloration. Choose OK. All right, that one is done. Let's now do a new layer above this. So, new layer. Now, if it comes in indented, sometimes this will come in indented. Just pull it up, and it will outdent for you. Indenting just means it's going to be linked to that one, which you don't want. Rename this one Stars 2. Get my T in there. There we go. Stars 2. Back to our brush. Foreground background stays the same. Change the size in here down to 100. So a little bit smaller. Leave everything else the same. And we'll come in and do some more sparkles right on top. This time, stay closer in towards the middle. These are our, I'm going to put just a couple out here so you can see those. There you go. These are little bright sparkles. And I'm going to stay in a lot tighter in here. You want to get a few up over the whole thing here. So you have them spread out a little bit. Maybe a few to the outside. But mostly staying in close in here towards the center. You want more down here and less up here. You want to make sure that some come off the edges. You want to have little, little, little streaks kind of showing in there. So you want to have some of that. There we go. Looks pretty good. Do a couple more up in here just for effect. We'll now colorize this bit of stars. A couple more. I like those. We'll colorize this. Same thing. Up to the layer menu and adjustment layer and gradient map. This time we're not blurring those out. Those have the nice sharp edges. Gradient map again and again make sure that checkbox is checked. Choose OK. Click on the gradient and this time we're going to be 
changing over to the pastels. That's that one right there. And the one you want is green, blue, yellow, which is right over here. Green, blue, yellow. Choose OK. And that puts that coloration on top. So it's a different coloration. Now, as you can see, that's far too strong. So let's bring the opacity of that layer down to 50%. And that's a lot better. You can adjust the opacity of these two gradient layers to control how much color is in those stars. Let's bring down this back one here, again, down to about 50 as well. See how that goes a lot softer now when I do that. So you can fine tune the amount of coloration in there depending upon what you want. If you want less color, just bring that down. More color, take it up higher. Here it is without the color. And there it is with. See how the color actually adds a lot to that image by doing that. And here's without the back. Okay, so much for the stars and the sparkles. That's good. We may put in just a few highlights at the very end here to kind of really punch things up a little bit. We'll come back to that. So that's taken care of. Now we're going to move on. Come down to the silk layer way down here. And then put a layer above the silk layer. So a new layer. And then black ellipse which will be the shadow under here. So let's just go ahead and let's call this one shadow. There we go. And we can zoom in on the base. That nice and large, if it's a bit too big, I'll just back out one step. That's okay. So on a nice black ellipse, so let's reset our colors to their standard black and white. Grab the ellipse, and then right about in the middle here of the base, if you think of this as an ellipse there, about the middle of the ellipse, we're set at unconstrained, draw from center, and then let's pull that out. It's not going to do tall or wide. Bring it out so it's kind of mimics the, the shape and the size of that. doesn't have to be perfect right now. Now we can adjust this a little bit better. There's our shadow layer. Okay, back to our tools. We can then pull the sides in a little bit and fine tune the shape. On the top, pull this down until it just crosses over the actual base right in there. So it's mostly on the bottom and not on the top. And then bring the, the sides in just a little bit. So it's about that much around there. That looks good. That's our shadow. Now take this layer, drag it up to the new layer button. There we go. Hide that one in case you want to go back and try it again. So that's saved. On this one, right click on the copy and then simplify at the very top there. Okay, simplify that, and then we'll do a Gaussian blur on this. So a filter, blur, Gaussian blur, five pixels, that's fine. Choose OK, and the position looks pretty good. I think I'm actually OK on that position. Maybe a little bit in, just a little more. There we go. Just a, You don't want too large, or it appear like it's floating, and you don't want to have it floating. And down just a touch. Okay, and then bring the opacity of this layer down a bit. Let's just bring that opacity down to 75. Now, you don't need to type in the percent sign. Just hit the Enter key, and it puts it in that for you. And the opacity allows it to show through a little bit of the highlights and the dark parts. It looks a bit more natural. Okay, that one's done. So we're all taken care of now with the bottom shadow. And we can zoom back out again. Let's fit screen. You can see there's a nice little shadow down there. Now this next bit would be putting in the rest of the background. And for this, I need to have this picture a lot smaller. But first, let's show the background again. There's the background. That's fine. And then we we'll want to have a layer mask on our black layer here. So click on the layer mask. There's the layer mask. And then using the zoom tool, let's just back this out a bit. Use a slider here. Out to about 19%. 18%, 15%, somewhere in there. Real small. The reason for that is I want to pull a gradient from right in here to up here. So I had to have some space up there to pull that gradient. Okay, back to our gradient. And then we want white on the bottom, black on top. I want to pull from the bottom to the top. Make sure you're on the layer mask over here. Look for that light blue outline. If your colors are like this, black lift, white right, just click on reverse. 
You want white left, black right. And then coming down here, right about at the top of the base. So it's about right here. Click there and then drag straight up about that far. So it's about half the size of the picture straight up. And that shows that background in up here, but it hides it down there, giving you that nice kind of background effect. And there you go. That's all there is to it. Let's go ahead now and I'll zoom in a couple of notches. Since we have our floating windows, I'll pull it out and it floats. And I can now drag this a lot larger and zoom in. There we go. Last little touches if you want to. This isn't necessary. If you want to do a little bit fancier stuff over here, some brighter spots, go clear to the top, make a new layer, change your foreground color to white, just hit that reverse button, go back to your paintbrush. That should still be on the star. There it is. Let's bring that star size up this time. Let's bring it up to 200, so it's a good size star. There it is. And then I'll put one right here, just click it. Actually, let's change one more setting on this. I'm going to pull that up out of the way. Let's go to our brush settings and let's set all this stuff back to the defaults, which is the left hand side. Actually, this is about 25 default, but it doesn't matter on this case. Everything to the left, that's fine. And then I'll come right here, a couple of taps right there. A couple of taps down here, maybe a tap right there. There's a few bright ones to add a bit more sparkle to it. If you want, you can put something on there. Not really necessary, but it adds a little something. So there we go. That's how to do this Aladdin's Lamp project. Again, a lot of little things in this, but you bring them all together. It makes a very nice little illustration. Okay, there it is. Aladdin's Lamp. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.